One of my graduate placements was in the Composite Research Department, which is a relatively new department at Airbus. I mean, in Airbus, we've had composites on aircraft since the 70s, but only for secondary smaller structure. More recently, it's been for more and more major primary structure. I think it's the, the composites over time have definitely improved uh, a lot, and definitely in terms of strength. Composites have always had an advantage over metallics in terms of plane strength in unidirectional sense, but that has improved in the other directions, in other orientations over time. Back in the 70s, we were using it for things like ray domes or fairings, so very, really uh, tertiary structure, not even secondary structure. But then in, in the 80s, with 320, the single aisle aircraft, we're using it more on movables, primary structure like the tailplane. So as the strength improves and we get a big benefit in weight, uh, we, we, you see us introducing more and more uh, of the composites. And then with A400M, which was our first composite wing aircraft, and A350, which also had a composite fuselage, all these are enabled by these improving uh, material production. Uh, so yeah, so we had this composite research department which I joined and then essentially enjoyed it, enjoyed working with composites as a new thing. We were developing new materials and new processes and so I decided I just wanted to stick with that and essentially through my 22 years primarily been doing composites related activities. Within Airbus it's really, with a, with a, with, within any flying aircraft it's all about weight primarily about weight. We need to get high performance. We'll get high performance through having lower weight uh, components. Um, and now, uh, definitely more recently, there is much more of a focus on sustainability. We're, we're reaching net zero by 2050. To do that, uh, and still increase the number of flying aircraft, we've got to do it at even higher performance, even lower, rate, uh, lower uh, weight and lower emissions. So um, yeah, f for, for us, Composites is, is, a, is a, an enabler, enabler to do that. Also, we're looking at um, high build rates for our single aisle. Um, to do that, to make aircraft quickly, um, we need to have more and more integrated components. Rather than have lots of separate bits that we have to bolt together, uh, we need to make bits that are all joined already and composites really lend themselves to that. Whether we're co-curing prepregs or we're infusing dry fibre, it allows us to join components and remove a vast number of bolts and therefore speed up the processor. So in terms of process improvements, in terms of light weighting, um, also, composites offer the corrosion resistance also, uh, and yeah, that's probably, probably the main, main things. My biggest future opportunities are going uh, it's going to be, for me, it's going to be in the wing applications, but there are significant challenges that are going to come with that. We have the sustainability targets, we have uh, the, the net zero emissions. As I said, to do this, we need high performance, so we really need to use composite materials. There's not so many other choices, because that really enables us to have a high performance, a low emissions wing. But we have to consider that end-to-end -end process, the life cycle of the material from the precursor to the end of life. Um, even though the, f the, the flying of the aircraft is one of the biggest contributions to the emissions, there is a lot of processes before and after that also need to be addressed. So I'd say we, we really need the, the support from the material manufacturers, uh, material suppliers, to really focus on those elements as well to help the whole of the aerospace industry. Mm -hmm.